What's up America? This is Kim with Geographiers Academy. Thanks for watching. Today we're going to check out a really innovative holster from Macero. So let's get started. We're super excited to say that we have a new home range in Madison, Ohio called C4 Range. With the capabilities of the facility, we're really excited because there's no limit to the different kinds of classes we can have. So look for a lot of new things coming up. We also added a bunch of new classes on our schedule. So make sure you check it out if you're going to be in the area or visiting the area. Here is the Macero holster. It has unique features. Let's take a look at it. I've been wearing it about a month now. So I'm going to give you my impressions. In just a minute, Neil's going to tell you about his impressions of the holster as well. The first thing you're probably noticing are these clips. They're very unique looking. They almost look like big paper clips almost. Um, and the only thing I had problems with it was I had to change my belt. Let me show you why. You can see this is the belt I've been using recently. It's the Tactica uh, leather belt, and you can see how much larger it is than the actual belt loop, so it's stuck up quite a bit, which I wasn't too happy with. So I had to switch back to my core belt to make it fit better. Even with my core belt, it even stuck up a little bit. So just keep that in mind. It's not a bad feature. It's just that you might have to wear a larger belt, or maybe they need to make an option for smaller belt clips. I don't know. The other feature that's very unique about this holster is how the Kydex part is actually Velcroed on. So you can change the ride height, you can change the cant just by moving this around until you really have unlimited choices on how you want to wear it, which is a really cool feature. One thing I don't, I don't know what this is for, but there's this little cutout in the very front. Maybe someone will know what that means. The next feature that's very unique is the back of the holster. If you have ever touched one of those sticky holsters, that's what I would say it reminds me of the most. It's very, very sticky, which is great because it's going to hold it really close to your body and making makes drawing really nice and smooth. It doesn't move around much. But one thing as a woman, I can tell you that it's kind of a pain and a hassle is when you have to go to the bathroom and you have to pull your pants up and down all day because it just tries to drag on your body. So, um, you know, it's just my opinion of it. And it's, I mean, I can see why it's a positive, but it's also just another thing to think about. So my thoughts overall, I think the quality is really nice. It's very innovative. It's a cool product and it's very comfortable, but I'm not a fan of those clips. They're just a little too large. It's also a little bit bulkier than I like. I know that they have it Velcroed on there so you can move it around, but then it's not as tight and as close to my body as I would prefer. And also the stickiness is a plus and also a minus. So it's not my favorite holster and it's not something that I'm going to use every day, but it's definitely a great product. So let's get Neil in here and let's have his opinion of it. So before we get into my, uh, or the, my impressions of the holster itself, just so we're on the same page as how I carry uh, this particular setup here, I carry it the four o'clock position, just like I do with all my holsters. That's my personal preference. If you want to run appendix, whatever, obviously that's up to you. This is where I carry it. Just kind of put things into perspective as far as the position. All right. So this one is for a, a Glock 19 and we'll pop this guy out and take a look at it. I will tell you uh, I've shared some of the same uh, feelings that Kim has with this guy um, and some things that I, we may differ a little bit on so let's take a look. So mine came in this OD green pretty cool. Um, I, I made a joke about this once before uh, about inside the waistband holsters and colors and patterns. If it's inside your waistband what does it matter? I mean if this was pink I don't really care. Uh, but that's it for those of you that are into different colors. He definitely has uh, several options. Uh, Kim has that uh, OD, I'm sorry, that FDE type tan color, OD green, and they definitely have black. One thing you may have noticed uh, for those that are really paying attention, Kim has always uh, carried the, X, uh, the XDS, and this is the shield. And the reason she's carrying the shield is because they don't have an XDS. So uh, hopefully that gets expanded uh, coming down the line. All right, uh, let's talk about impressions. First of all, uh, this I don't know what kind of backing material this is, whatever you call it. It is extraordinarily uh, sticky. Okay, I don't mean sticky like adhesive. I mean the, the, the surface, the, the friction pad, if you will. I mean, I feel like I could probably climb up a wall with this. It's just a, a very, very sticky backing. It does have uh, some really nice perforations to kind of ventilate. Um, I, I shared a little bit of the, I don't, taking it on and off is a little bit difficult because when you do go to put it on, actually, let me just show you this real quick. Uh, and again, I can't knock it for being a bad feature. It's just, I guess, different, if you will. 
So normally, if this was just kind of like a neoprene or something like that, uh, like other manufacturers where it's not real sticky, I can just kind of get enough in there and slide in there. It's virtually impossible. I can pull my shirt. Like, you can see how sticky this is. There's really no way I have to uh, take my belt almost completely off to get enough gap in there. And it's still kind of a, a struggle. Okay. I, I would tell you that there, that's a little bit better. You got to have it completely off so it doesn't touch your clothes at all. Otherwise, you're just going to be fighting with it. And then once it's on, whoops, hang on, doing this uh, the way it would legitimately be done. So this is kind of the difficulty at times of putting this particular holster on. Okay, so we got that side on, and then we got this side on, and then we can tighten all our stuff back up. Okay, now if you put this on here and realize, man, that's not the exact position I want it on, you're going to have to undo this and move it all around because, like I said, it is extremely and it's stuck on there. Now I would say the the reason for that, in my opinion, and Kim brought it up earlier about these these wire clips, because you can see there's a pretty good gap in there that uh, it can move up and down. I don't believe that the the intention of these clips, like a lot of holsters, would be this is what holds the, the holster to the actual uh, to the body. What I believe is he invented this backing to be the main source of keeping the holster where it is. And these are almost like redundants just to keep it from ever coming out. That would be my theory. One other thing that you will find with this, if uh, I go and holster my gun, you can see that the wire clips are all the way down, okay, flush with the belt. And then when I go to draw it, you're going to see that the, the, the actual uh, holster rides up until the, like, the clips catch almost at the bottom. So it's kind of pulling it all up. So the holster actually has a little bit of movement upon holstering and then drawing it out. So I would agree with Kim in the fact that I would like to see the metal wire clips to be the exact size of a belt, you know, one and a half, one and three, four, whatever, whatever size belt you want uh, to, to fit that more exacting. I, I think that would be an improvement that I, I would say that they would uh, want to look into. Uh, I don't know what the slot is either, so kind of, at first I thought it was uh, maybe a hole for, for fluids or dirt or stuff like that, but since the bottom is completely open, I don't, I don't know. So let's talk about retention. Uh, in this particular model, again, for the 19, it has uh, two uh, screws there. On the smaller, like, uh, shield size for Kim's, it's got one, and it's got those uh, rubber grommets, whatever you want to call those in there, where you can adjust those. When this uh, originally came to me, it was unbelievably... Tight. It was the tightest holster I've ever had. In re I mean, I could almost not pull it out. So uh, those are almost completely backed out. So it does offer a wide range of retention. You can get this as tight or uh, obviously as loose as you want. I would always recommend, too, for those who don't have a lot of experience with inside the waistband holsters, when you test that, you can't really test it like this. You have to test it while your belt is on and it's pulled tight to your body because that changes a lot. This tightness here, which is still very tight, probably a little bit tighter than I like, when I put it on, it's even tighter, okay? So just be aware of that. You can't really adjust it from outside uh, that deal. Now, as we showed, it's got a little Velcro backing on there. We'll grab this one, for example, here. And I like that. Um, I can move the holster up or down, because obviously Kim and I have completely, thank goodness, different body styles. Um, and so, the, you know, whether she wants to can't or whatever the case is or how, how high or high low it is in your body, um, that's infinitely adjustable and that is very cool. The other thing that I think is super cool about this holster is right here, okay, made in America. And this guy's actually uh, local to our state. So anytime I can uh, throw business to uh, local companies, obviously, uh, I'm a big fan of that. The last thing I'm going to say about it is the holster tends to stick out further from the body. And I believe that's because... The holster unit itself is a completely contained holster, and then it's added to this thick padding in the back. Uh, so I find that it, uh, it kind of, it, I found other holsters, let's put it that way, to be a little bit tighter to the body. Not that it's uh, like a, a deal breaker by any means. I'm just saying you, you will find that it, it sticks out a little bit, pushes a little bit further from the body itself than uh, some other designs. Now, ultimately, at the end of the day, I feel the design is very unique. Other than the things that I said, I think that that maybe we could uh, change. I'd rather this be a little less sticky and these a little bit more specific to the belt. But other than that, um, I think it's a fantastic quality piece. I think that the, the molding that's done on here, the actual uh, fitting of the gun, nice click in there. Um, 
There is, this is called, by the way, the purebred. He's got a couple others that are attached right to the, uh, like a single of the wires uh, for probably more of an appendix style for a smaller one. You can see that a lot of these are already cut. You could have, uh, you know, a, a, a red dot on there if you wanted, or mar, whatever the case is. Uh, obviously, the barrel, if you had any type of suppressor, you know, thread protectors, anything like that, not going to be an issue. It's going to clear, I, I mean, the sights. Uh, let's try to do it this way here. You know, everyone's going to freak out. The gun's not loaded, I understand. Uh, but you can have pretty high sights on there, and you're not going to have any issues with that. So all in all, it's uh, when you get the one holster that you like, it'll fit pretty much any possible gun configuration that you have, and I definitely like that. Uh, the last thing about these wire clips, I think they are ingenious. I think that uh, when they're on, they are, he says, like almost invisible, and I would agree. These look like this would never, nobody's going to say, that's definitely a holster, right? Because that, that little wire thing could be a bunch of different stuff, and it's extremely hard to see, especially on a belt that's black. So anytime I look at a uh, holster company, if they have other, uh, what I would call their system, like a mag pouch, I like to get a hold of that so I can kind of evaluate the whole whole deal. Um, so here's the uh, the mag pouch that uh, shares pretty much the same features. Again, it's got that single wire clip, very, very low profile. Um, one piece of uh, Kydex all the way around. It does have a nice little retention there, so you can adjust that. Okay, I like that a lot. Uh, what I will say is, as you can probably tell here, put my hand back there to make it a little bit easier, that um, attachment point with that metal wire, that uh, clip, it keeps, again, it's very bulky from inside the waistband. There is a big gap. I, I noticed that with my other mag pouches, I don't need as much belt room or waist room uh, as I do with these two. With these two combined, it's, uh, it's pretty significant. So I would like to see that closer somehow and again I'm not an engineer in any way but if that could get more uh, closer more flush to the surface I think that'd be a huge improvement but the quality just like with the holsters the edges are smooth it's very professional very well made so let me put it to this way if uh, I wasn't doing a review here and I just decided to buy that particular holster I'd be totally happy with it and I would definitely buy it again and I would recommend uh, to, to other people to get as well so uh, ultimately I would give it a thumbs up we hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up, like, share, comment. We always love hearing from you. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe here on YouTube. Like us on Facebook, on Instagram. Come see us at our new range. And we put all of our premium content on Patreon. Until next time, remember, it's always better to be judged by 12 than carried by 6.